Hello and welcome to Tuesday DJ Gig Tips, brought to you, as always, by Vibo, the music planning app. Yes, I know that it's Wednesday, but eh, close enough. When you are doing sales for your mobile DJ services, let's say for a wedding, besides availability, what's the first thing that you want your potential clients to know? Let us know in the comment section. There's no right or wrong answer here. How do you do it? I've got my way. You have yours. I don't think many people do things the way I do it. And kind of to prove that point, I asked this question on social media. When selling your mobile DJ services, besides availability, what's the first thing you want a potential client to know? A lot of people talk about value or reliability, trust experience, things like that. Somebody said that they care as much about the client's wedding as they do. I don't know if it's possible to care as much about somebody's wedding as they do. They have an emotional investment in this. They're getting married. You may care about their event. I care about my client's events, but maybe not as much as they do. If I did care as much as they do, I'd probably be a hot, stressed out mess. And I might do things for them at a lower cost if they maybe couldn't afford them. Um, so you care about their wedding for a cost that's a little different than as much as they do. Maybe you care as much as they do for a price. I don't know. It's working for this DJ, though. Apparently, they're selling their services by telling their clients this. There's a lot of answers. Mine's different. And before I tell you my answer, again, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just how you do it. And my way isn't the right way or the wrong way either. It's not gospel. And it probably won't work for a lot of people, but it works for me. When I think about what kind of DJs are getting phone calls from my potential clients, I do want to point out to the client what separates me from the other DJs without talking about myself. So what I usually do first thing is I will get all of their information, location, times of everything, how many people, things like that. And then I'll go straight to logistics without getting really goofy, geeky tech with them. So, if let's say they're having an outdoor ceremony, I will explain that my system is battery powered. The reason I use a battery powered system is because sometimes at like a barn venue, for instance, the power might be unreliable. So I use a battery powered system. We don't have to tap in to the house's power at all. So really there's no limitation as to where they get married. We can be in the middle of a cornfield. We could be on a boat. It doesn't matter when it comes to, their wedding reception, I will talk about a system that suits their needs. For instance, if it's, let's say, a 140 person wedding reception, I'll talk about the sound first, and that the way my system's designed, the dance floor will be good and full, but anywhere off the dance floor, your guests and family will be able to have conversations without screaming at each other. They appreciate that. I get good feedback from that. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because this is going to be a real nice time for our families to get acquainted. Whatever. They like that. When I talk about lighting, I tell them it's tasteful, yet I will not be shining any beams of light in anyone's eyes. So it won't be disruptive and it won't be in any way painful for any of their guests. I won't do strobes and things like that either. They like that. That's what I lead off with. So the way I'm looking at it in my head, I'm building something. I'm helping this potential client build something, in this case, a big day. So I need to start with a foundation. And the foundation is the equipment without getting geeky about the equipment. I don't talk about any brands, Pioneer or Electro Voice or FPT or RCF or 
Denon or Ape or ADJ or anything else. I don't mention a brand name. I just talk about what the system can do and how it might be different than what they're used to with the sound and the lighting because not everybody does what I do. And if they don't do what I do, it doesn't make them wrong either. If you're not using what I use, it doesn't make you wrong. I just know what my equipment can do and how it can enhance the experience. So I talk about that and I build the foundation. From there, we start talking about other things. We've got the foundation. Now we can talk about what you want for music and what kind of vibe you'd like to have and things of that nature. How do you do it? What's your go-to? Let me know in the comment section. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you next time. Practice and enjoy.